happy to be here. Um, I thought it would be impressive for you all if I started with a joke about Oscar Pistorius. You know, the Blade Runner guy, the, um, the infamous Paralympian. But then I realized that to do a joke about him would be no real feat. <laughs> I'm glad you liked that one, actually. I thought that joke wouldn't have any legs. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd be stumped. <laughs> anyway, my name is uh, Cielo. Uh, my full name is Cielo uh, Emilio Nazario Croce. And does anybody know where that name comes from? Anybody? Uh, Spain? Yeah, no, actually, you'd be surprised to know it comes from a couple of pretentious assholes. <laughs> Just kidding, though. I get along with mum and dad. I wish I could tell you that I get along well with my twin. But we don't really get along. Because I don't really have a twin. <laughs> when my mum was pregnant, she was a pretty big lady. People said to her, oh, I bet you've got twins in there. But no. <laughs> Just me. <laughs> It'd be nice to have a twin, though. I could get him up here. We could do a little bit of a thing together, you know? We could do a stand-up thing. Like, I like Coke. I like Pepsi. Yeah, well, Coke's easier to snort. <laughs> Yeah, that's real class, eh? <laughs> we're different, but we're the same. <laughs> It'd be nice to have a twin. It'd be nice to have someone to talk to. Someone to tell secrets. It'd be nice to have someone understand me. <laughs> It'd be nice to understand somebody else. We could hug each other. I bet he'd be just the right height. We could even tug each other. I bet he'd know just the right grip. But it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be incest. Incest, no. It'd be twin -cest. <laughs> Which, in my opinion, is twice as good. It'd be lovely to have a twin. But I don't have a twin. I've got a grandma, though. She'd be proud of me being up here. She was actually one of the first people who gave me comedy lessons. She'd tell me everything about comedy, but unfortunately she had dementia, which made her forgetful and repetitive. So we never really got past the lesson on setups. But you know, I forgive her. After all, my grandmother's dementia was so severe. <laughs> it's probably good that she had dementia, though. It meant I could open up to her. I could talk to her about anything, knowing that she'd probably just forget about it later on in the day. In fact, she was the first person I ever told that I was bisexual. And she looked at me and said, Bisexual, Ciela? But what does that mean? And I said, well, Grandma, it means that whenever I'm trying to fuck a girl, she's like, bye. <laughs> I have a complicated love life. I'm actually in an open relationship. And uh, people have a lot of misconceptions about open relationships. They think they're for people that are, you know, unable to really make a commitment to anything. They're indecisive, they can't commit to anything. And I have two things to say about that. The first thing is that is 100% completely wrong. And the second, kinda true. <laughs> yeah, a lot of misconceptions about open relationships actually. A lot of people think that open relationships are open in the way that a bar might be open, you know? That it's fun and bountiful, and everybody's having a good time, there's plenty to go around, and the night ends well. But it's really open in the way that a wound is open. <laughs> it's a problem that needs to be dealt with. Because people think that people in open relationships are greedy, and that we want the best of both worlds, that we want to have our cake and eat it too. But it's not really like that. It's more that you have your cake, 
and you love your cake and you support your cake but you also know that sometimes that barista down the road with the tattoos is gonna fuck your cake <laughs> And then, he's, and then your cake's gonna come home at three o'clock in the morning and get into bed with you, say I love you, give you a little kiss goodnight, and you can't help but notice she's still got a little frosting in her hair. <laughs> but I don't mean to objectify women with that joke, no, no, I, I would never, ever, ever objectify women. But I'll womanify an object. <laughs> I'll womanify the shit out of an object. Even this spotlight. Because I see you there, spotlight. You caught my eye as soon as I was coming up here. I'm getting a lot of warmth from you, spotlight. You really know how to brighten up a room. I mean, are you people not seeing her? She is electric. I will have to make sure my fingers are not wet when I screw her. I don't get out much, in case you can tell. Um, in fact, uh, the last time I was in a bar like this was when I went to go and have a drink with uh, Vladimir Putin and rural Queensland. And uh, it was my turn to buy the next round. And I said, uh, hey Vlad, what are you drinking? And he said, well, uh, I will have a white Russian. Because I am of the belief that you are. That's almost what I was going to do. Vladimir Putin said, I, I am of the belief that you are what you drink. And I said, that's very funny, Vlad. I turned to rural Queensland and said, I bet you'll be having an old-fashioned. <laughs> the rural Queensland didn't really like that. So they just had a... White wine. <laughs> Thank you, I've been selling your benevolence.